Thank you for your kind introduction and welcome everyone to this webinar. Today we want to discuss how to facilitate transcriptomics of sensitive target cells with gentle cell sorting. The webinar is divided into two parts. In the beginning, I will introduce gentle cell sorting upstream of transcriptomics. And afterwards, Alexander will talk about his exciting research and how he acquired pancreatic microvascular endothelial cells for transcriptomics analysis using the Max Quantido. Let's first discuss why cell sorting is so important prior to sequencing. First, we want to enrich our specific target cell populations and improve the reads. Second, we want to exclude dead cells and debris in order to avoid cell-free DNA and RNA contaminations and decrease the costs. However, cell sorting is coming with some challenges. First, if the cell sorting technique is harsh, dead cells might end up in the sample. And this could increase the costs and also DNA and RNA contaminations in the sample might result in background. Harshness of the sorting can also lead to gene expression artifacts that lead to false results. Another challenge are timely delays due to slow sample processing. And these could lead to gene expression alterations, again ending in false results of your sequencing experiments. Let's have a look at some exciting data. Unsorted cells and sorted cells have been compared in regards to their background. During this experiment, it was found out that unsorted cells had around 50% of reads actually being from a cell, the rest was due to high background RNA. Sorted cells, on the other hand, had about 97% of reads coming from the cell and only low background RNA, showing how important cell sorting prior to sequencing is. On the upcoming slides, I want to discuss how you can improve your sample quality with using microchip-based gentle cell sorting. The Max Quantido cell sorter is a real benchtop cell sorter due to its low weight and small dimensions. It is equipped with three lasers, eight fluorescent channels and two scatter channels. This provides full experimental flexibility and the possibility of multi-parameter cell sorting. If you are interested in more information, have a look on the website, the image brochure or the user manual. At the heart of the Max Quantido, there is a microchip. Let's have a look on the cartridge. The cells are inserted into the input chamber. At the bottom, there's a mixing propeller, keeping the cells at suspension at all times. Cells are sorted into the positive collection chamber and the non-target cells will all flow through to the negative collection chamber. At the bottom of the cartridge, there is a microchip. On the right side, we see this in more detail. Cells are coming from the input chamber into the channels of the microchip. They are crossing the laser beams and if the system recognizes a target cell, a pulse will open the valve and the cells will go to the positive collection chamber. All the non-target cells will flow through to the negative collection chamber. Let's have a look at this in real life. The valve is opening and closing. And here the green cells are sorted into the positive collection chamber. Microchip-based cell sorting is truly gentle. Cells do not get decompressed or charged and only low pressure and mild shear forces are present. Another advantage is sorting in a closed and sterile cartridge is safe. There is no carryover no contaminations and no aerosols are being produced. If you are interested in high-speed sorting, we also offer our high-speed cartridge for fast sorting performance. Let's have a look at how the cells are arriving in a positive collection chamber. For this, an endoscope was inserted into the positive collection chamber. 
the cartridge was loaded and the sorting was started. We can see here that the cells are easily flying into the positive collection chamber. Another advantage is that cells are strongly concentrated during the sorting process because the valve is only opening for the short time that the cell needs to be sorted. This can save you, for example, a centrifugation step. Sorting with the Max Quantido is aerosol free. Here is a recent publication. The researchers used dragon green beads and a Cyclix D impactor sampling cassette to check for aerosols in the environment. The Max Quantido was compared to a conventional droplet sorter. While the droplet sorter produced many aerosols during the process, the Max Quantido did not produce any aerosols, showing that it is possible to sort biohazardous material with the Max Quantido. A genomics workflow using the Max Quantido can look like the following. First, single cell suspension has to be performed. For this, one could use the Gentlemax system, or for example, cells can be pre enriched using the Automax Pro. Then, cells are sorted on the Max Quantido and they are used for sequencing afterwards. Qui at the UCI is working on epithelial cells. He is interested in the diversity of these cells and therefore he is performing single cell genomics. He is taking mammary glands from mice, doing single cell suspension and sorting the cells via flow sorting. And afterwards he performs 10x genomics. Interestingly, he does a head-to-head -head comparison of the Fax droplet sorter and the Max Quantido. First, he observes that the cell types and states between the cells sorted on the Tido and the Fax droplet sorter are similar. However, when he takes a closer look at the data, he sees that the cells from the Max Quantido gave more gene reads, indicating a better sample quality. He is also looking at the stress response gene expression and he sees that the cells sorted from the Max Quantido had a lower expression of stress response genes. Finally, he also performs a functional assay. Here he performs a sphere assay and he observes that the cells sorted with the Max Quantido form bigger and more spheres in culture, which is indicating a higher cell functionality. All in all, cell enrichment using the Max Quantido before sequencing improves the sample quality and reads while minimizing sequencing artifacts and costs. Last year there has been a webinar on exactly that topic. If you are interested, have a look at it. Nuclear sorting is getting more and more important in genomics workflows. Therefore, we also tested if this is possible on the Max Quantido. A confidential marker was used together with DAPI to stain for the nuclei. After sorting, a purity of above 95% was observed. I want to show you some recent publications using the Max Quantido prior to sequencing. One example from COVID-19 research is coming from Patrick Wilson and his colleagues. They are working on B-cell subsets. Another example from COVID-19 research is coming from Petra Bacher and her colleagues and they are interested in the T-cell memory. A study working on biomarker identification is using oligodendrocyte progenitor cells. And there is an example from non-human primate research where they sorted retinal cells. To summarize, microchip-based cell sorting is gentle for the cells. Sorting in a closed cartridge system offers the operator as well as the sample safety. One example for single cell sequencing showed that sorting with a Tido prior to sequencing can improve the sample quality and the reads while minimizing artifacts and costs. Sorting of nuclei is also possible on the Max Quantido. With this, I want to thank you for your attention and I want to hand over to Alexander.
Hello, my name is Alexander Jonsson, and I'm a PhD student in the Kors Grain Lab at the Department of Immunology, Genetics, and Pathology at Solar University. Our research group is interested in the pathogenesis of diabetes, and my studies are focused on understanding the stromal cells of the human pancreas. I'd like to thank Miltenia Biotech and the Labrit for arranging this webinar and giving me the opportunity to present my work. Today I'm going to talk about our recent application of the MaxQuant Tidal Cell Sorter to sort microvascular endothelial cells from human pancreatic samples. I'm going to start with a brief introduction to pancreatic microanatomy and highlight some advantages of using the MaxQuant Tidal Cell Sorter in our process. After that, I'll present a project that was involved in that was recently published. First, consider the human pancreas. Our group is interested mainly in the endocrine compartment of this organ due to its role in diabetes as a hormone producing organ. However, the digestive enzyme producing exocrine tissue actually constitutes about 99% of the pancreas. It consists of parenchymal cells, here, illustrated here in jello, which is interspersed by a rich network of capillaries, seen here as red triangles. The hormone producing part, the islets of Langerhans, make up just 1% of the organ and the randomly distributed throughout it. Similar to the exocrine tissue, they essentially consist of parenchymal cells with a rich capillary network. The average islet consists of about 1,500 cells. In the study I'm going to present later, we use the exocrine tissue compartment as sort of internal control to analyze the islet tissue. Now, the first step in our experiments is acquiring the tissue for analysis. This is done through a process called islet isolation, which is enzymatic breakdown of the entire organ into clusters of islets and in, of clusters of exocrine tissue. Pancreata are routinely received and processed for use in transplantation or research at our facility here at the Department of Immunology, Genetics, and Pathology. If we are interested in the transcriptomes of the cells, we want to study the tissue as fast as possible, which often means starting our cell sorting at odd hours. This would make it very complicated to uh, coordinate our cell sorting with some sort of core facility. So I'm going to show you an example of our pancreatic microvascular endothelial cell sorts. In this first figure, we actually see an unstained sample of islet cells, which highlights the white high autofluorescence that is uh, noticeable in our tissue. As you can see, there's a linear increase in fluorescence fluorescence intensity for some of our cells. And we can see this in many different channels in our samples. Here's a demonstration of what our samples look like prior to sorting. After we have the removed doublets through gating, we have about 1.5 to 2% of our cells being double positive for endothelial cell markers CD31 and CD34, which plus identifies these cells as microvascular endothelial cells. Then, after we sort the cells using the tidal cell sorter, we can reach a purity of about 90%. I think that the non-target cells that we see here down in the lower left quadrant are coincidental events that were sorted together with our target cells. Uh, it seems possible to reach a higher purity when we sort the cell types. So I think this is some inherent property of the endothelial cells that we're trying to sort that causes this contamination. So next, some things I quite like about the MaxQuant Tidal Cell Sorter and how we can use it in our workflow. Um, it is a quite low maintenance and uh, easily operated instrument. It does not require specially trained personnel and a core facility that maintains it all the time. We, we could implement it quite easily into our somewhat erratic workflow. Further, the cells can be kept at a consistently low temperature throughout the entire sorting process, both before, during, and after we've sorted the cells. This is important in order to minimize the metabolism in our cells prior to transcriptomic analysis. Additionally, the negative sort of fraction is retained and can be easily used in downstream applications or resorted. This is something we appreciate when we have our hard to get tissue material that we're trying to study. And additionally, there are the, the sorting forces themselves seem to be quite gentle for the cells a very low fluidic pressure, no nozzle compression, no electric charge being applied to the cells, which would be in the case in the conventional photometric cell sorting. This is quite nice since this probably means that the sorting process itself has a minimal effect on the 
the status of our sorted cells. So now I'm going to move on to uh, talking about a recent product where we used Tito Cell Sorter to sort microvascular and epithelial cells. My colleagues and I did this work recently and I had it published in the journal Scientific Reports. Why would we be interested in sorting endothelial cells? The microvascular endothelial cells are actually a quite heterogeneous cell type that line the inner surfaces of capillaries. They are not simply a passive tubing, but they've been shown to differ between vascular beds in different organs and even within parts of the same vascular bed within an organ. When it comes to the pancreas, they also constitute an interface between the organ and the rest of the body, which means they might be implicated in physiology and disease, the interactions with nutrients, hormones, and inflammatory cells. They've also been shown to be able to actively signal with the islet cells, and they are known to be lost in islet culture and transplantation. Further, they are known to be morphologically altered in both type 1 and type 2 diabetes. Thus, we decided to investigate the gene-level properties of islet microvascular endothelial cells. So for a brief overview of our methodology, after organization, we get our isolated pancreatic tissue isolates with various contents of islet and excrement tissue. We separately processed our islet samples with an islet content of 78% or higher, and our exocrine samples, which had an islet content of 0 to 4%. In order to be able to sort our cells, we first had to break down the larger islets and exocrine cell clusters acquired from isolation into single cell suspensions. This was done using the enzyme acutase. After this, we stained our cells using two markers, endothelial cell cells, um, CD31 and CD34, and one marker for leukocyte cells, CD45. We then sorted our CD31 and CD44 positive cells using the Taito cell sorter. Having done this, we took small aliquots of cells for quality control analysis. We assessed the purity through qPCR and flow cytometry on a separate instrument. And the majority of the cells were used in RNA-seq. And we then compared the data between these two compartments from our isolated pancreatic samples. Some results. So in total, we analyzed eight organ donors with normal glycemia and five with impaired glucose metabolism and in order to be able to make additional comparisons between the healthy pancreas and the more type 2 diabetic-esque pancreatic phenotype. The impaired glucose metabolism group was quite heterogeneous, consisting of some donors with an uh, isolated high HbA1c, and some donors who also had treatment for type 2 diabetes. So here are some donor characteristics. Uh, to summarize this table, the two groups were highly similar for all clinical parameters, such as age, BMI, etc., but they differed uh, statistically in the level of HbA1c, which is what we were going for when we uh, chose these groups. We uh, analyzed the purity of our sorted samples uh, in our aliquots. Uh, we used qPCR to analyze some genes that are typically expressed in islets in exocrine tissue or in endothelial cells. To summarize these data, we pooled the data from all our samples based on their sample origin. And uh, here we can see uh, that the endocrine genes glucagon and insulin are mainly detected in our islet samples prior to sorting, which is seen here in black in the top row. But there's also some detection in our sorted islet and endothelial cell samples, uh, seen with the red part of these uh, circle graphs. It seems that there's a bit more contamination in glucagon than with insulin. Then uh, for our exocrine gene amylase, we can see that the majority of the signal was detected in our exocrine samples prior to sorting with some level of contamination in our exocrine endothelial cell samples on a comparable level to the islet bulk samples. And finally, we see in the bottom row that the endothelial genes TECAM1, which is the same as CD31, and von Willebrand factor are almost exclusively detected in our sorted endothelial cell samples. Next, for some 
both sorting flow cytometric analysis. Uh, here are two representative flow cytometric uh, analysis of our sorted samples, showing that the purity of anterior cells are roughly 90%. To further evaluate the purity of our sorted samples, we used multi subject cellular deconvolution, music a mathematical method for estimating the cellular composition of bulk RNA-seq samples by comparing the bulk transcriptomics data with single-cell RNA-seq data. Doing this, we also found that uh, the model predicted that we had roughly 90% of PDL cells in our samples from both tissue compartments. And uh, when we plotted this data versus the fact data, we see that in general, um, these two measurements uh, correlate well with the exception of a few cases where um, the music estimate was higher than the facts estimate seen here to the top, in the top left of the figure. So we have reasonably pure samples. Then do these samples differ at the gene expression level? So how? First, did a principal component analysis to see if there was heterogeneity in our samples. Um, and as we can see here, the, the samples cluster somewhat based on the tissue of origin, with our islet in the field of cell samples being in one part of the PCA and the X screen samples in another. However, there was no evidence separation of donors with impaired glucose metabolism or normal glycemia. This heterogeneity consisted of about 700 genes that were upregulated in our islet samples and 600 that were upregulated in the x samples. In these figures, we can see the counts per million, that is a measurement of the level of transcription on the x-axis in the left figure versus the log fold change on the y-axis. And additionally, we can see how these genes distribute when we compare the log fold change with the value in the light box. So then we analyzed these genes through gene set enrichment analysis. And we found that there are several gene sets that were upregulated in islets, seen here as red dots, and uh, another bunch that are upregulated in the exocrine samples, seen here in blue dots. In this enrichment map, similar gene sets are clustered together in the yellow circles. Uh, which are then manually annotated based on their function. Uh, I've highlighted some interesting and highly similar clusters that are here in red that are upregulated in islets, and these sets are related to vascular development and endothelial development. Uh, additionally, we can see some uh, uh, various gene sets that are upregulated in the rest of the figure in islets, uh, including gene sets related to modifying the extracellular matrix and the regulation of various functions. I've also highlighted upregulated gene sets for exocrine tissue, and these gene sets were related to biomolecular and ribosomal processing. And next, we plotted the top upregulated gene sets, um, the GO terms with our with the enrichment in islet samples, ha have a positive NES score as indicated on the x axis. Again, I highlighted some of these gene sets in red. See that there's quite a lot of gene sets that have to do with vascular uh, and field development that are upregulated here in our islet samples. So what could this data mean? From our transcriptomic data, we can only speculate on this, of course, based on earlier findings in the literature. There have been previous findings of increased replication in all pancreatic cell types in a subset of organ donors. This shows that turnover of the endocrine tissue is feasible, at least under some conditions. Additionally, there could be an extent of physiological islet cell turnover. Uh, islet size is known to be quite heterogeneous, and the extent of cellular turnover within islets and whether smaller islets grow into larger ones, and the factors determining the maximal size of an individual islet have not been determined. 
in triolet angiogenesis and extracellular matrix remodeling from endothelial cells could be an important piece in this puzzle. The neighbors of uh, of cellular turnover and remodeling. So for some conclusions, then we used the tylosol cell sorter, provided a very convenient alternative for sorting primary microvascular endothelial cells at a high purity. This allowed us to create sort of atlas of genes that are likely expressed in the pancreatic microvasculature. And among these genes, we found higher levels of angiogenesis-related transcripts in our islet and the microvascular and the cell samples. And this, to say, transcriptomic data that is consistent with ongoing tissue modeling that has been previously suggested in the literature. And in our exocrine microvascular samples, we found an upregulation up in biomolecular catabolism. So we don't really know what this stands for, but it might be the, some uh, contamination from the uh, exocrine parenchymal cells. And we also did not find any unifying transcriptomic microvascular endothelial cell signature that differs between subjects with normal glycemia and subjects with impaired glucose metabolism. However, we had quite few uh, subjects with impaired glucose metabolism. And uh, they were also quite heterogeneous with some uh, not having a type 2 diabetes diagnosis and some having type 2 diagnosis treatment. So um, it's hard to tell what this uh, stands for. There might be some more specific signature at more specific time points of the disease, for example. And uh, that concludes my talk. Uh, thank you very much for listening.